Apart from the major seismic activity that occurred on the 10th and the 14th, since the 17th, there's been almost no day without strong to major seismic activity, including 7.6 on the 19th in Mexico, and an aftershock on the 22nd, 6.8. If you've been following the forecast on the website and our social media channels, from the 11th to October 2nd will be very critical due to a long series of critical planetary geometry, 19 planetary alignments in total, and arguably the most critical are yet to come. And as you can see, from the 23rd to October 1st, 11 alignments occur. Most critical, Venus, Mercury, Neptune this afternoon, followed by Venus, Mercury, Earth tomorrow afternoon. And we also have Venus, Mercury, Jupiter on the 28th, also critical. And on the 30th, a convergence of Sun, Mercury, Mars and Venus, Sun, Neptune. This is what the geometry looks like on the SSGI graph. A high lunar peak, 20 on the index tomorrow. That starts tonight, actually, later on the 25th. And we see the red peaks and the purple peaks. They are the most critical geometry. And there is a high probability of major to great seismic activity. High 7 to 8 plus magnitude following this lunar peak, but also around this lunar peak is very well possible. Or the peak on October 2nd because we see a clustering of critical planetary geometry here as well. But I believe the main focus should be on the 26th, 27th, maybe 28th, if it arrives a bit late, following the high lunar peak that is preceded by critical planetary geometry, two red peaks and also two uh, purple peaks. And here is a purple red peak. And that's the Venus, Mercury, Neptune alignment, like I said, really, really critical. In a worst case scenario, we could see seismic activity high 8 to 9 magnitude, but that's in the really worst case scenario. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see something around 8.5 or larger. There is the potential for this kind of seismic activity following the planetary and lunar geometry from the 23rd to the 25th, 26th. I'm certainly not exaggerating, but again, in the worst case scenario. And this has also to do with the position of Uranus. We see areas in the background and I've done a video where we see the largest earthquakes on the record in the last 600 years. And based on the statistics, there is a higher probability of magnitude 8.5 or larger seismic activity. And Uranus doesn't move very fast, so it takes a bit. If we drag Uranus outside of areas, it means that well into 2023, there is this higher probability. Of such a large seismic event and it could very well be in the next couple of days with really critical planetary geometry going to the actual time we see here that indeed venus is about to line up with mercury and neptune really critical earth is very close and we see that the moon is lining up with venus with mercury and neptune in a very very short time and we also see that Earth is about to line up with Mercury and Venus. A really critical convergence, again, from the 23rd to the 26th. Six planetary alignments. And we see that yesterday morning, Earth already lined up with Venus and Neptune. Looking at lunar geometry specifically, we see that indeed today, the Moon lines up with Neptune, that's this morning. With Venus, also this morning. There's very little time between these two. And then several hours later, with Mercury, then we have a new moon, that's tonight, and also with Jupiter, uh, that is later tonight. This is a very critical part, and that's why we see the high lunar geometry, 20 on the index. Very, very critical on top of the critical planetary geometry. Going back to the SSGI graph, I think we should anticipate at least a mid-7 seismic event. This could be very close to the lunar geometry, the lunar peak here on the 25th, early 26th. It could also be later on, 27th or 28th, maybe around the second lunar peak here, uh, later on 28th or early 29th. That's really difficult to say. We don't know the condition of Earth's crust. We've already seen some major seismic events, two magnitude 7.6 earthquakes within two weeks. That's very well above average. So depending on the condition of Earth's crust, whether or not there is a fault section with critical stress, because that very much determines the strength of seismic activity in the coming days. The planetary and lunar geometry is certainly there and it really favors major to great seismic activity. But again, decisive is the condition of Earth's crust. It's not a one-way process. It's not just a planetary geometry against the planet. It's a two-way process. It's also the building up of stress between tectonic plates. And if there is enough stress, 
the electromagnetic waves coming from the planetary lunar geometry will certainly trigger major to great seismic activity in the coming days. Looking at the seismic activity in the last two weeks or since September 11th roughly, we see all those seismic events occurred around the Pacific, the 7.6 in Mexico with a 6.8 aftershock, a 6 pointer in the southern Chile just the other day. Um, I would like to show you some areas that I believe are really critical for major to great seismic activity. We go to the Indian Ocean first. We see two six-pointers off the coast of Sumatra. And in 2004, the fault between northern Sumatra and the Andaman Islands ruptured. What has not ruptured yet, and it's been hundreds of years, is the area to the north, the Andaman Islands, and to the north, the Arakan subduction zone. And it actually goes all the way into Myanmar. This is a subduction zone region. And this area could very well be next. It's really critical. Another critical region, I believe, is the Ryukyu, no, the Kuril Islands, sorry, the Kuril Islands region in the north. That's just north of Japan and into Kamchatka. A six-pointer occurred the other day in the Komondorskia Ostrova region. If we go to the East Pacific it's actually called the Pacific Northwest, as seen from the North American continent. We have, of course, Alaska, where a 9.2 occurred in 1964. But to the south, we have the Pacific Northwest, the Cascadia subduction zone, and a magnitude 9 earthquake, or thereabouts, is going to occur there again. We just don't know when that is going to happen. Further to the south, we see South America here, Ecuador, Peru, Chile. Chile is always critical. Very prone to earthquakes around 8 magnitude. But we haven't seen such major seismic activity to the north, Peru, Ecuador. And I really mean near the coast. There was an 8-pointer in Peru in 2019. That was 150 kilometers deep. But I'm really talking about the megafrost earthquakes near the coast. In 1906, off the coast of Ecuador, magnitude 8.8. .8, and... It's been a while since such major seismic activity occurred near the coast of Ecuador and Peru. And another area I would like to mention is in the Atlantic, actually. It's between the Azores and Gibraltar. This is the Azores Cape St. Vincent Ridge. And in 1755, a magnitude 9 earthquake occurred here. Uh, there have been major seismic events up until the 1970s, 7.5 up to 7.8 even. These kind of large earthquakes can occur here, and they will do so again. We just don't know when, but it's 45, 46 years ago. So I believe that uh, Portugal, South Portugal, is also due for major seismic activity. Finally, in the Mediterranean, we have the Hellenic Arc with Crete here. And in the year 365, that was the last time a great earthquake occurred in the southwestern part, magnitude 8.5, 8.6. Don't be surprised, it's been hundreds of years since that happened and one day it will happen again because of the collision between the Eurasia plate and the Africa plate. Other than that, major seismic events occur frequently, relatively frequently, in the Dodecanese Islands region, western Turkey, uh, 6 to 7 magnitude in Greece and occasionally in southern Italy up to 7.5. These are very risky areas. Usually we see six-pointers, not very often. Greece has them roughly every two years or so. It's been a while, so Greece, I believe, should be on watch. Italy, certainly. It's very unpredictable whether it will be in southern Italy, central Italy, or northern Italy when it happens, and we don't know when. But we do know that the next couple of days are really critical. And further north, of course, in Turkey, Istanbul, near Istanbul in 1999, uh, we have the North Anatolian Fault, and uh, from 1939 up to 1999, major seismic events occurred here. Marmara could be next, very well possible. So everyone, be on watch in the next couple of days, the coming week actually. We have 11 alignments coming up until October 1st. It's going to be really, really critical. But again, depending on the critical stress in Earth's crust, that will definitely determine the magnitudes in the coming days. Always check out the website for the latest updates and our social media channels on Twitter. We're also on Rumble for videos and recently we opened a new channel on YouTube as well. Be safe everyone, until next time. <laughs>